And uh, the Lord blessed us today. When you honor the Word of God and just stay with the Word of God and just preach the Word of God, it just works. Amen. Amen. Right. It just works. And yep. we let it do what it's going to do, and we bless the Lord for that. Yep. Amen. Now, we uh, real quickly, I'm not a salesman, though. Don't, don't get it wrong. You see this, this book, there's two versions of this book. This is the small one. And this is the large one. And that's it. It's the same book. It's just a different looking cover. And you, any preachers in here that doesn't have a copy of one of these, I want you to get it. This is one of the best books that I've ever seen. One of the best. One of the very best by Keith Noss. That's on in heaven now. But I'll guarantee you, every preacher, especially anybody pastoring or wanting to pastor or getting ready to pastor or just starting out preaching, that little book, now I'll give it to you. If you come by our table... I'll give you that book, you preachers. Amen. My wife has a book back there. Here's one. She's, this is one out of three that she has that she's written. You want to get this little devotionals, and you'll, you'll get a kick out of this. It's just, some of it's a little funny. Some of it's some crying places. And some of it's climbing the mountain places. Some down the valley places. It's a whole lot of good stuff. Amen. And here's my book back there. Is He Leadeth Me, a daily devotional journal. Now, you think I'm going to ask big prices and things, but I'm going to fool you. Amen. See, I'm not a salesman, but if you have a donation that you'd like to give, we'll print another book on your donation. And with every donation you give, not only will you give like you wanted this book, but these, these two, this, this one's free right here. But if you wanted this book and you bought this book, then you get a free book. Amen. <laughs> Oh, I can't make it. Walmart can't even do that. They won't. Everybody hangs around Walmart. If I ever pass for another church, I'm going to call it the Walmart Baptist Church. That's where everybody goes, and they got a lot of money. See, amen. Praise God. All right. Now, but now this book does have a price on it. This little small book right here is $20. Amen. And you, but the reason being, it takes a lot to, uh, to make that one. Now, Brother Rick Martin, I've met him a few years back. I've heard of Rick Martin a long time. Uh, but uh, I had never met him just, a, just till just a few years ago. And I really, truly enjoy being around this fellow. We've not been around each other very much. I preached for him once, I think. And I've heard him over at Emmanuel Baptist and heard him at a few other places. And uh, we appreciate him being here and taking part in this meeting. He's going to come right now. We ain't going to fool around. Now, this is one thing. You ain't going to fool around. We ain't going to beg and plead. If, uh, if God gives you a good testimony, I shouldn't even have to ask you. Amen? Are you done? I'm done, preacher. Go for it. <laughs> See, that's vintage. Brother Rick Martin. <laughs> All right. Preach to it, brother. All right. I can't, can't believe my... I, I don't know quite a few of you. Uh, and uh, But... Uh, I'm glad I'm here with you. Amen. Uh, I always love to come. I love to preach. Uh, God called me to preach. Uh, after I'm done, you might not believe it, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> God did call me to preach. Yeah. I am 61. I'll be 62 in a while. Uh, I was I was saved when I was 20. Sophia First Baptist Church, and uh, a fellow that preached on hell that night was Philip Lilly. Amen. Our buddy was. Yes, he was my buddy. He was my pastor. And uh, Brother Lyle told me, he said, you got a doctor's degree by sitting under Brother Philip. <laughs> and I didn't know how much I listened until I started pastoring. Yes. <laughs> and then it would come to mind what he would say. Uh, for example, he'd say, I'd say, man, I, don't know what to, I remember asking him, I don't know what to preach on. My trouble's having something, getting something to preach on, getting a subject and getting my, getting my notes down. And get, he said, listen, if you preach the Bible, you can't go wrong. Right. You can't for preach sure. it wrong. You can't preach the Bible. If you preach on the Bible, you can't preach it wrong. Amen. And he said, eventually, you'll just stop using those, so I stopped doing that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't use any notes hardly anymore. I got a bunch of notes. I got things like that, but I don't use them much anymore. 
mostly because I can't read my writing. <laughs> and I wrote, you know, I can't read my own writing. And my typewriter's broke, and I can't use a computer, so here I am. <laughs> but anyway, Philip was my pastor. Joe Bowen was my assistant pastor. Now, me and Joe had a big time soul winning uh, uh, thing going on <clears throat> where we would win, try to go, we'd go every Thursday and try to win souls. And I'll tell you a couple things. Here, he told me I had 15 minutes. I ain't going to fix that. I'll give you other preachers 15 minutes. <laughs> now, I'm not going to do it. You, you guys are much better at it than I am, I'm sure. But, but, uh, Philip and I went over uh, next to Oak Hill one time. Somebody give us a name. We went over there. Some of you heard this before. We went over there and we went in this man's living room and uh, him and his wife. And we went there and Philip was there. The man was drinking. Drinking. He was drinking. Yeah. So uh, I'm sitting here and Philip's sitting there. And the, the rule was. Phil, I, Philip says, I do talk and you do pray. <coughs> they get saved, that means you pray good. <laughs> so I, yeah, I, I pray. Yeah. And so we we're in there sitting talking to this guy, and he's just looking. And he starts talking, that man said, How do you know that Bible's right? How do you know that? He said, I don't believe none of that. Philip said, I ain't going to talk to you no more. He said, Rick, you talk to him. I'm going to talk to his wife. <laughs> she goes over and starts talking to his wife. So I'm talking to the man. As I'm talking to the man, he said, you see that gun case over there? And I said, yes, sir. He said, I'm going to go get a gun. I'm going to load it. And when I get it loaded, I'm going to shoot you and your preacher buddy. <laughs> and he got up, went and got the gun, Drop those shells, drop some dice. I said, This man drunk, he's going to shoot us. I said, Phil, we need to go ahead and go. And Phil said, All right. So we left. He didn't argue. We left. <laughs> Next Thursday come, we're sitting in the study. Phil says, Joe. Uh, Joe said, How'd y'all do last week? And he said, Oh, Rick got us run off the gun. <laughs> and I said, Oh, yeah, yeah, man. He was drunk, you know. I was up there talking. So uh, Joe said, Well, where in the lip? He said, I live over there. He said, Take Rick with you. I said, I ain't going back over there. He said, ah, you go back over there. Went over there, and Joe was talking to her. And the man got saved, and his wife got saved. Amen. That, that, that Amen. night. So. Amen. But, you know, I mean, it was just, that was just one little thing. Something I, I dearly remember is what they got me to do after both of them, or probably, I think one of them had passed away, is they had my dad in the Lord. My uncle to the Lord, my aunt to the Lord. Uh, another uncle to the Lord. Another two or three cousins to the Lord. This was on visitation with that church and my pastors. What had done me, it got me to get me a book. <coughs> I got me a book and I sit down one night. Everybody's talking about genealogy running where you come from. I ain't worried about where my family come from. I'm worried about where my family's going. Yeah. Amen. So I listed all their names. Every one of them. I listed my dad, 12 brothers and sisters. My mom, 12 brothers and sisters. I got 121 first cousins. <laughs> I've started going, and I've got, you see, one, two, three, four, five, six, Six, six or eight more, and their kids, first cousins, that's become members of my church. Mm -hmm. All right. That I have baptized. Uh -huh. that, I, that I led to the Lord. Amen. All right. I'm worried about my family. I'm worried about your family too. <clears throat> but I've gone. I, and in my book, I get my little book. I'll use your little book. My book's a big, big book. Opened it up. I got their name. I listed my dad, my mom. All his brothers and sisters, their wives, their children, their children's children, everybody, and I went. I've, and when they get saved, I put a check mark. Uh -huh. If I led them to the Lord, I put a check mark and a star. <laughs> if I led them to the Lord and baptized them, 
I put a check mark and star, maybe something else. I don't forgot what. But, you know, I never forget. I got a big old boy in my church, and he married my first cousin. <coughs> Easter, four years ago, I preached on the sermon. I preached on the, the, the scripture I'm going to read to you in just a minute. I can't help it when I read the scripture because I love the scripture. And, and uh, I remember, Dave weighs about 320, big old boy bigger than anybody in this church I see right now. About this time, big old boy, big old boy. And he come sitting in the back, and he'd been coming a couple weeks. And I remember Easter morning, he got up and come, crying like a baby. Amen. Amen. Doing what they call, used to, repenting. Uh -huh. <laughs> Remember that word? Oh, That's a good yeah. word, yeah. And good he word. come and he repented. And he got down on his knees right there. And I made the mistake of leaving my microphone on. What a mistake, really. Everybody in the church heard it. I looked up and all kinds of people was crying in that church because Big Dave got saved. That's just something. You know? <laughs> I, love, I love that. Yes, sir. What I'm telling you is That's I have good. a burden for my family. Yeah. Amen. I think if this camp meeting does anything, I hope it gives us all a burden or yes, more sir. of a burden or increases our burden. Amen. <laughs> you young people, a burden for kids you go to school with. That's what we try to emphasize, or I do, to our youth pastor. That's right. And to, uh, hey, we had a dinner Sunday. I said, here's what we're going to do. <coughs> These girls don't even know how to make a cake. Lord, I know how to make a cake. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna have cooking classes for our girls. I mean, we're not even going to just have the girls. We're gonna have the boys. And cooking classes is going to be Christ-centered, so we can do all this. See. I'm going to Revelation here in just a minute. Revelation chapter 20, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna give it up because these other preachers have got to come up here. He tells us this. <laughs> I don't have any money. You don't need to pick up. turn you on here. Oh, okay. You want me to start over? Let's <laughs> start over now. All right, Revelation chapter 20. You know, sometimes I think you can get a little too modern. Yeah, I'm Amen. Sure. You know, yeah. if I go in... At our church, I'd say Revelation chapter 20. If you preach there, Brother Tom's been there. And uh, Lyle's preached there uh, quite, some, quite a lot. Jim's preached to homecoming for You know, we, but, uh, and you get that? As soon as I say Revelation chapter 20, I call him Smart Alec. Got a computer guy over here. He works for, used to work for, he's a computer programmer. And when I say <coughs> Revelation chapter 20, verse number 11, he, He'll have it on the TV we've got mm. back here in one of the park. <laughs> you know. And uh, we get, you can get a little too modern sometimes, you know. Yeah. And now I'm looking, people ain't carrying the Bible. Yeah. You know. And I'm, I'm saying, where's the Bible? And they'll say, right here, or got a phone or something, whatever you call it. <laughs> Yeah. I said, that ain't a Bible, that's a telephone. <laughs> I said, no. I said, take your Bible out, carry it to your car, so let your neighbor see you carrying a big old black book. Yeah. And they'll say, he must be going to church. Yeah. Right. Yeah, carrying the phone, they'll say, he's going to Walmart. He's going to Tom's church. <laughs> <laughs> Walmart. You know. So anyway, you know, these guys uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. carry your Bible. Get your Bible, take it to... Bible, and then what they tell me, they say, I got the Bible, I got exhaustive concordance, I got more books on here than what you got. I said, I don't care. People can't see that, you know, but they need to see some things today. Now, Revelation chapter 20, verse number 11, said, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. Look at this verse. And there was found no place for them. You know that's talking about? That's talking about people you know. That's talking about people in your family. That's talking about people that, that you have given up on. 
that you don't think about much anymore. I've got in my family, and every now and then I've got to go back and say, you know, Lord, uh, yep, they're using drugs, but they need Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. Yep, they're drinking or they're cussing or, or they're doing all the, you know, these three or four big sins we're talking about, you yeah. know. But, uh, uh, yeah, but uh, I tell you what, you know, the Lord changes things, doesn't He? Amen. 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 He does. I'll never forget that. He changes. You know, yeah. 41 years now I've known the Lord. Amen. Amen. 41. Been preaching 39, I think. Amen. Wish I could get good at it. I do, really. Wish I could get good at it. You know, no family no place. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. Well, all this is the part that I'm. I'm, I'm, uh, I wonder about, uh, I, I think about these verses every day, every day. I preach out of them probably 15 times a year I use these verses and preach. You know, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to the works. See gave up the dead which were in it, and the death of hell delivered up the dead which were in them. They were judged every man according to the works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That includes people I know. That includes people. Listen, folks. I'm going to tell you this. Back when I was 22, I worked for Beckley Water Company digging ditches with a shovel and a mat. That's how we, you know, we laid water out. And I, and I done just, I worked with an old boy. He was down. You go down bad off mountain. You know what I'm talking about. Lyle, what's the name of the place down at the bottom? Prince. 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 He lived down Prince and he grew up. And I remember driving one day, me and him was a real quiet boy. And I, uh, I remember I said, uh, we was getting ready to eat lunch, and I said, I, 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 like to, I like to pray if you don't mind. He said, sure, go ahead. And he bowed his head and everything. I said, uh, we was eating. I said, you go to church anywhere? And he said, uh, that's an easy way to ask anybody. You know. And uh, he, I said, you go to church anywhere? Uh, have you ever been saved? No, never have. You ever thought about it? Ah, sometimes. And I left it alone. That night... That boy got killed in a car wreck. Mm -hmm. I'm, that's been close to 40 years. And I think of that boy quite a bit. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah. He's never left me. Never left me. That's right. Now, I was in, and, and, and we mess up. We mess up a lot. I do, I mess up all the time. I was in a little general store in Crab Orchard here. Oh, a couple weeks ago, there's a boy in there. He looked, he was probably 55, maybe. And he he had been drinking all of his life. I could tell you could tell that. You can tell, Brother Tom. Oh, yeah. Been drinking all his life. I knew that. Because he called all the girls honey. Hey, honey. <laughs> you know, he's like uh, he's good to everybody. He's just humble. He's got a case of beer down here, a Bud Light, he's pushing it with his foot over here, and he's getting ready to check out the counter. And it goes like this. And she says, what you got? And he said, that's right here, she said, I don't know, 27, 32 and all this. And I thought, I'm going to give him a track. I'm going to talk to him. And any tracks. So I thought, well, I'm going to talk to him. Well, I had something. He was in line, another person me. I said, I'll, I'll catch up with him. Yeah, I, I never did catch up with him. I never talked to him. Yep. That's just been maybe a month ago. Now I'm praying, God, put me in contact with that man again. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, put me yep. in contact with that man. In there, brother. I'm telling you, folks, we can pastor. We can build big churches. We can fill this church up. We can have the money. We can do everything. If you're not a soul winner, if you're not giving folks this gospel, I'm talking your children, 
your, your mother, your father, everybody. That You know, these people say, well, you know, your family, that's the hardest ones to witness to. You know why? It's because you ain't living right in front of them. Amen. Amen. I know, I know this, folks. You know, because you know what you got to do? You got to do some repenting. And you got to get in front of them. And, 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 and on and on. Now listen, I'm by far a good Christian. I don't believe myself to be a good Christian at all. But I will tell you this. When my folks and my family see me coming, they know why I'm coming. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. And I've got, I've got, in fact, I mean, I've got all kinds of people in my church that I, I have, I have wanted them. I want them in the church so I can take care of them. <laughs> you might say, I want to feed them what they need. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. I know what they need. Yeah. They don't need this new stuff, all this just praise Amen. Jesus and go around and singing and all this bunch of hippie bunch of junk. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let's just get down. Let's just get right down. And, and, and you know what we need to do today, folks? We need to just get some sin out of our churches today. Amen. Amen. I mean, we just need to get, I'd like to see a revival come yes, where the church gets on their face before oh, God. Yes. Amen. We don't have much anymore. Yeah. I remember at Stanford, one revival, I don't know, I think, Frank Pittman preached that revival. Mm. We know Frankie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, I come out of, same church Frankie come out of, you know. But here we are. My goodness, we had 92 saved. Mm. And 92 people saved. From that 92, you know how many are saved on visitation? Hundreds. Hundreds of people got saved. Mm -hmm. My dad was one of them. Mm -hmm. hey. My dad got saved. My dad's in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my dad's in heaven. Yeah. I mean, listen. You know what that means? Oh, yeah, old dad's in heaven. You know what that means? <laughs> He's gone to a place where, hey, listen. He got gates of one pearl. He's seen those. Come on, yeah. brother. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He's seen it. I mean, he's seen uh, the, the crystal clear streets of gold. <laughs> he's seen all these. <clears throat> Most of all, you open them eyes, who are you looking at when you get hey, to the hey, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah hey, Matt. You know, I'm wanting to go there. Yeah. I look at my grandkids. I've led two of them to the Lord. I've baptized two of them. I like to get them early. Yes, sir. Well, they get in sin. Yeah. Baptized my little niece, my sister's little girl. She said, uh, I'm really scared to go underwater with my eyes on. Do I go all the way underwater? And I said, Yes, ma'am. You go all the way underwater. I said, The Lord will be with you. Don't you worry about it. She said, okay. She said, do you think you'd mind if I'd wear diving goggles? <laughs> and I said, sure, you can wear them. I got a picture of her. <laughs> Me baptized her. Her standing up about this tall. And, and uh, now she's, it's Alyssa. Jamie, you know her. Yeah. Alyssa, so it is. And she's in the youth group now. She's in the uh, eighth and ninth grade. And she's been coming to church now three or four years, you know. On and on. I mean, listen, I want to see them. I want to see them kids uh, get up. Marry a good Christian boy, yeah. and the good Christian boys marry a good Christian girl. Yeah, come on. You know, and, and yes, <laughs> hey, I know I'm all over the place. You Listen, go ahead. This one boy told me, he, he, he said, I, I said, uh, I was preaching, and he came out and he said, Do you think looks really count? I said, I'll tell you what. <laughs> About 40 years. They all look the same. <laughs> it don't matter. You're looking for a woman? You know, it don't matter. They all look the same. You go to Walmart, they all in the same area. The stuff you see on television, that's a lie. <laughs> My goodness. Hey, I'll tell you what else. The men, they look even worse. <laughs> the men get even worse. Oh, but we think we look better, don't we? <laughs> My goodness. All right, listen. Main thing I want you to realize 
in this in this revelation, the books were open. We're going to be standing there. We're going to be standing there. We're going to see, is your dad saved this morning? Tonight, I mean. Is your wife saved? Is your husband saved? Is your kid saved? Is the people you know saved? Are they saved? Come on, Brother Rick. Are they saved? I mean, are they there to where, to where when you stand there, they're, they're, I, you know, I told them Sunday. I said, you know what I want out of every bit of this? You know what I want? I want the Lord to say, Rick, look behind you. And I want to be able to look behind me and I want to see a horde of people behind me. He said, those are the people that you prayed for, that you took the gospel to, Amen. that you preached to. Amen. All it is, you introduced me to those people. Amen. Amen. That's what I want. Amen. I'm dead after that soul winner's crown. I want Amen. it, folks. I want it to give to the I want it to give to them. Amen. Amen. I want yes, it. I want it. I want it bad. Oh, listen, folks. I go to bed at night. And I got these people on my mind. And the older you get, the more people you got on your mind. The older you get, the more burdens you get. Yeah. It don't get any lighter. No. Yeah. I wonder what Jesus thought when he was carrying a cross through Jerusalem. I wonder what he thought. I believe the burdens got so heavy on him, he dropped that and Joseph had to carry that cross. And I believe as he got on Calvary, folks, I tell you, you want to be like Jesus? Get to where you can't carry the cross. Amen. That's uh, where we need it. Yeah. Oh, no. We're so wrapped up in going to Walmart, <laughs> saving money, getting the 401Ks. Mm -hmm. I'm 61. I've been taking insulin shots for since I've been 18 years old. Y'all do the math. That's a whole lot of shots. I went for a job interview. Guy said, man, how many shots you take? Back then I was taking two. I said, I take two a day. He said, man, you got holes all in you, ain't you? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> I said, I can be in the north, you know, and I can, God bless America, and the wind blows. I can be in the south, and I can whistle Dixie. <laughs> you know, I, I took so many shots. I said, that don't bother me. The doctor said, and then let me tell you, I went to the Greenbrier Clinic. And the Greenbrier Clinic said, we think you've had a heart attack. And I said, I don't think so. <laughs> he said, what do you mean you don't think so? I said, I don't think so. I think your machine's broke. He said, let me assure you, that machine's not broke. And I said, well, let me assure you, I ain't had no heart attack because I ain't felt a thing. I said, wait a minute. Back when I was 20, I felt something. And I was telling him I was saved, you know, jerk. Uh, yeah. And he said, well, I mean, a, I mean a regular heart attack. <laughs> and I said, oh. He said, you need to see a heart specialist. So I went home, didn't give it another thought. So he sent letters to my doctor telling me about the uh, physical. He said, oh my, we need to give you an EKG. So I laid down, they give me an EKG. He said, oh yeah, you need to go see a heart specialist. You, you've had a heart attack. I said, I told my wife, I said, here, machine's broke too. <laughs> I went down, saw Dr. Stanton, Charleston. He's done 65,000 stints. Put that means stints in people. <laughs> I said, duh. He said, well, it looks like you haven't had one heart attack, but you've had two. And I said, well, I figure that your machine's broke too. My wife said that. She said, see, that's what he does. He goes to the doctor and he says, well, I figure this or I figure that. And he ends up telling the doctors what he needs and he leaves and y'all don't never do nothing for him. And he looked at me and he said, did you hear what she said? And I said, yeah. I said, if I shot her and I wanted to, I'd have been out by now. <laughs> yeah. So he started laughing at my joke, and that was good. Is that it? 
He said, well, we're going to put you on some medication. We're going to do a, what they put on things? <coughs> catheterization. And you got a catheterization on it. That's Lyle's doctor, too. Good guy. Christian man. And uh, he said, yeah. Folks, you're looking at a man. i got nine blockages in my heart. <laughs> Have you ever heard such an nonsense in your life? <laughs> nine blockages. And he asked me, he said, uh, what do you do? I said, I'm a preacher. And he said, are you a Presbyterian type preacher or are you a... I said, no, I'm a... <laughs> and he said, okay. He said, well, I can't tell you how to preach. God only does that. He said, but you need to keep, keep it easy. And I said, I don't think I can do that. He said, well... You need to calm her down a little bit. And I said, okay, I'll do that. So that means you can't roof houses and, you know. <laughs> Next time I went to him, I said, I used to be able to whip four men. I can only whip two now. <laughs> I need to get back up to four. You know, so. I mean, it's just amazing. He said, I read the same book you do. And I told him, I said, let me give you a verse. It's appointed unto man wants to die. After this, the judgment. Yes. I said, I can, I can fall over. You can have all you and all your buddies around you. You ain't going to keep me here. That's my appointed time. My leave. I'm ready to go. He said, well, that's good. Because I probably won't be around you when you decide to leave. <laughs> that's what he told me. And I said, well, okay then, you know. He said, but, but. I mean, listen, he said, you need to take this serious. I said, I know you're smarter than me when it comes to that heart. He said, evidently there had to be, there's got to be somebody that needs to hear one of them sermons that you're preaching so they can be saved again or God done took you out. He said, you've had what we call the weather maker. I don't know if y'all know what that is or not. I didn't know what it was, you know. I said, so... You know, yeah. And he said, so, you be ready. I told him, I said, I'm ready. You ready? Amen. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> I mean, listen, if I drop over, I will be with the Lord before I hit the floor. Amen. That's right. Amen. Will you be? Yeah. Will you be? Praise the Lord. Yeah. I got ready when I was 20 years old. Sophia First Baptist Church. Yes, sir. Philip gave the invitation. I was sitting in the third pew back. And when he said, if you want to get saved, you need to step out and come up here. And I started crying. I was knocking women down. <laughs> Everything. You know, I'm all way. I was crying, folks. And I come out. I don't know about you. I got a real good dose of salvation. Amen, Amen. brother. Amen. I got saved that night. Amen. The Lord saved me that night. Amen. I've never been the same since then. Oh, I went home. I cried all the way home. I went to work the next morning and I walked in and I said, guess what? I got saved last night. I told everybody I come in contact with. That's what he told me to do and that's what I've done. <laughs> Amen. Yep. Yes, sir. Tell people about the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, brother. Listen. Bow your heads just a minute. If you're here tonight, you're not saved, I don't care. If you a member of a church, I don't care if you're a Baptist or a Catholic. I don't care what you are. Whether or not you're a Christian. Whether or not you're saved. If you're not saved, your head is bowed. Listen, if you're not saved, and you'd like to say, Lord, I am a sinner. I need you in my heart right now. Can you possibly, right now, right where you're sitting, say, God save me right now. Can you do that? Yeah. If you can, just look at me. Just look at me. Just look right up at me and say, I'd like to get saved right now. I want, I'm going to ask the Lord to come into my heart. Lord bless Amen. You. Brother Tom, it's all yours, brother. Lord bless you. Thank, thank you. <coughs> You're glad. I didn't know how long I could stay. You did. You I forgot did. my watch. You did one. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Amen. Well, thank you, folks, for having me. It's off to Brother Sam right there. Give it to Brother Sam. On oh. the way down. Thank you. Oh, you're an Amen. I guess.
Well, you, how many of you have ever heard Brother Is this the first time you ever heard Brother Rick Martin? Hi, first time? Hey, half the crowd here, man, they never heard you. Now they'll never forget. <laughs> Rick Martin is Rick Martin. Don't, aren't you glad for that? Ain't that what we asked for? Hey, just be you. I tried being other preachers when I first started preaching. I tried to preach like them, and I tried to do sermons like them, and I flunked out on all that. I'll tell you right now, I just start kind of being me. <laughs> and when I started being me, I finally learned how to preach just a little bit. I'm still learning. I've only been preaching 40 years. By now, you'd think I know a little something. Amen. Let me give you a quick report, and uh, the uh, the Pax Branch choir is going to be coming here in just a minute, and Brother Sam's going to going to preach after that. How many of you in here have heard uh, 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 have never heard Brother Donald Farmer Jr. preach? Never heard Brother Donnie preach. Well, he's sitting back here, the fellow with the whiskers. Rabbi, that's Rabbi Farmer. That's a good Jewish name, Farmer. <laughs> Amen. Love, love Brother Farmer. I heard him preach his first time he preached when he was 15 years old. <coughs> Turkey Ridge Baptist Church. 15 years old. I can tell you how old he is now. He's not up there way. He's amen. But I'll tell you right now, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. But let me tell you this right real quick. We we helped printing ministry. We help uh, we gave last year a loan from the printing ministry in Florida, FBC Publications and Printing, Faith Baptist Church Publications and Printing. Uh, we preach, uh, we send uh, uh, missionary literature around the corner and around the world. And we've got all those books back there you can look at and all that kind of thing. And you'll see some of the authors and all that, and they're all good. And uh, But here's one thing that we bless the Lord for. All together, time we summed it all up, we gave about $150,000 last year out of that non-profit print shop, $150,000 went to missions in free printing wow. and helping missionaries along and church planting. Amen? Amen? And one of those churches just cranked up last, last Sunday. Was it last Sunday, honey? His name is Jim Jordan, or Tim Jordan, and their first service last Sunday had 35 people there and baptized five. Say amen right amen. there. Praise <laughs> God. Amen. Anchor Baptist Church, and, and uh, it's New Smyrna, uh, Florida, and we printed all their literature for them to help them get started. And we bless the Lord for that. You were saying it, dear brother. One of these days when you win somebody to the Lord by however means it is. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. There ain't no set 21 point plan. You know, one, two, two, four, five, five, you got to do it like this. You, you do, uh, you just go witness to somebody. You could do like Clyde Box. Anybody know Clyde Box, preacher Clyde Box? Clyde Box carries two or three hundred tracks with him. His coat hangs way down like this. And uh, he, he'd go out, he'd go in men's restrooms. Good thing, amen. Say amen right there, yeah. men's restrooms. <laughs> don't, get, <laughs> don't get fouled up now. <clears throat> he'll go in there and he'll see someone's feet in the stall. He'll stick a track to the crack and he'll say, read that while you're at why you're, why you're, why you're doing business there. Amen? And I ain't going to do that. I'm gonna tell you, I'll give tracks out. I'll wait till they come out. I'm not going to go in there and throw them in the floor and say, read that while you're sitting there, buddy. Or they come out there looking around saying, who in the world was that? But you'll be surprised. He said, what you got in your hand? That's some crazy nut stuck out through the stall crack there. And I, yeah. He said, do you like it? And they'll say, well, well, what is it? He said, that's a gospel track. Want me to explain it to you? Yeah, somebody need to tell me something. And stand there and win that man to the Lord. Not every one of them. Not all of them. Just thought I'd mention that. What printing does. What the Bible does. The Word of God with a willing servant. Just giving them out. Amen. That's one way. There's all kinds of ways. We just go on and on with that. So we'll ask the, the, the uh, Pax Branch choir to come on up and get lined up here. They're going to sing four or five songs. And on their last song, I wanted to get you ready, get your purses and billfolds ready on their last song uh, that uh, we're going to receive an offering. I made a mistake before saying we're going to take an offering. You'd think I had a gun. <laughs> Y'all come on up here. They're going to line up and while they're coming, we got a little surprise from some little girls that's going to sing here before Donnie Farmer gets up here in just a little bit. But while they're coming, they're lining up here getting ready. Amen. And they're going to sing whatever God lays on their heart to sing. And uh, 
It's always a blessing to have the Pax Branch choir round. Hey Amen. Let me get out of the way. Don't come up this side too. Praise God. I'll get out of the way. I'm, I got to move. And so you all stand ready. They like to sing right before their preacher. And, he's, and, the, and the preacher likes that. How many, how many of y'all have never heard Brother Sam Vance preach? How many has never heard Brother Sam? You got a 100%. How many people have? All right, amen. 100% has heard Brother Sam. So you all sang, and on your last song, give me a little nod there, and we'll get some guys up, and, and we'll lift the offering. Amen. amen. Last of all. <clears throat> Brethren, we have met to worship and adore the Lord our God. Will you pray with all your power while we try to preach the word? All is vain unless the Spirit of the Aided him. Will you help the trembling mourners who are struggling hard with sin? Tell them all about the Savior. Tell them that he will be found. Sisters, pray and holy manna will be showered all around. Let us love our God supremely. Let us love each other too. Let us love and pray for sinners till our God makes all things new. Then He'll call us home to heaven. At His table we'll sit down. Christ will gird Himself and serve us with sweet manna all around. Amen. That's the Lord. Amen.
I'm going to do one now for our young people, get our young people to come around. Did, we, did you get the CD player to work there, brother? Huh? It's number three. Can our young people come around? Kevin, Chris. Amy. Hey, bless you to have our young people this night. No, we'll just let them sing for me. <laughs> I hate to say young people, the ladies get mad. Amen. Amen. I'm better are really in good. Yeah. Yes, 